It's important to remember that life is a mix of experiences, including the tough ones that don't feel good at the time. Often, it's through our errors and challenges that we learn the most valuable lessons. However, this doesn't mean we should shy away from trying to be positive when the opportunity presents itself. It's not possible to force positivity into your life. It's something that needs to be nurtured and invited in. The way you think, the things you focus on, and your actions play a crucial role in determining your experiences and, more importantly, how you interpret the world around you. I often think about what actions and attitudes invite positivity and joy into our lives and what pushes them away. It's interesting to note that avoiding certain behaviors can be just as critical for attracting positivity as the efforts you make to embrace it. Here are seven things to stop doing to attract positivity into your life. 1. Stop holding resentment. Resentment can be a deep and often unnecessary source of pain. In the past, before I gained a bit of wisdom on the matter, I would sometimes let resentment linger within me. Although I seldom showed it outwardly, intuitively understanding it wasn't beneficial, it still affected me internally. Over time, I've come to realize that resentment typically stems from a lack of understanding towards another person. It's not about agreeing with them, but recognizing that their perspective is as valid as my own, which has been crucial in dissipating feelings of resentment. At its core, resentment is about blaming someone for acting in ways that clash with your beliefs or desires, wishing they would behave differently. However, the reality is that you have no control over others' actions or thoughts. Trying to bear the weight of such control would be an immense and unnecessary burden. Embracing the diversity of thoughts and behaviors, accepting that people have different viewpoints, and choosing to move on, either by changing your own mindset or physically distancing yourself if necessary, is a far healthier approach to dealing with resentment. This acceptance allows you to free yourself from the grip of negative feelings and fosters a more peaceful coexistence with the variety of personalities and perspectives in your life. 2. Stop complaining a lot. I've realized that complaining, though it may seem relief at first, actually consumes a lot of energy. There's a brief sense of relief when you start airing your grievances, but dwelling on negative issues only tends to amplify my dissatisfaction and the discomfort it causes. This, in turn, can significantly dampen any sense of positivity. Moreover, being on the receiving end of someone else's complaints can be quite draining, even if the complaint has nothing to do with me directly. It's true that initially, if you find common ground with the complainer, you might not mind listening. However, as the minutes tick by, the relentless focus on the negative becomes unpleasant and can even start to deplete your own energy reserves. Recognizing this, I've made a conscious effort to limit my own complaints. I don't want to be the reason someone else's mood takes a downturn, nor do I want to diminish my own sense of well-being. So I try to keep my grievances brief and focus on moving forward positively rather than getting bogged down in negativity. 3. Stop drifting without a clear intention. Setting clear intentions is similar to knowing exactly why you're boiling water when you put the kettle on you have a specific outcome in mind, like making a hot drink. However, when it comes to our mindset and how we approach various activities or conversations, it's not always as straightforward. There was a time when I didn't give much thought to what I hoped to achieve in these areas, whether it was filling my time purposefully or navigating tough discussions. Everything started to fall into place once I began to establish clear intentions before taking action. It might seem obvious, but achieving favorable outcomes in anything becomes significantly more challenging without a clear goal. This lack of clarity isn't uncommon. Many of us go through our daily routines or engage in conversations without fully understanding what we want to get out of them. We might have a vague idea of our needs, but without specificity, it's easy to lose direction. I found that being mindful of my desired outcomes, especially in communication, makes interactions far more effective. It's hard to be understood by others if you're not even sure what you're trying to convey. Before I start on any task, be it reading, making a phone call, 
or deciding how to spend my evening, I take a moment to reflect on what I intend to achieve. This practice helps align my actions with my goals, making it easier to reach the outcomes I desire. 4. Stop carrying the weight of unforgiveness. Forgiveness and blame are intricately linked. The journey to forgiveness often starts with the decision not to blame others for our troubles. This doesn't mean ignoring the responsibility people have for their actions, but it does involve understanding the complex web of circumstances that shape those actions. Everyone's behavior is influenced by a myriad of factors, be it their upbringing, past traumas, or even genetic predispositions. Keeping these aspects in mind can help mitigate feelings of bitterness and resentment. If anger has already taken root, forgiveness becomes crucial, not necessarily for the sake of the person who wronged you, but for your own peace of mind. Holding on to anger and resentment can harm your mental health, disrupt your sleep, and turn your own mind into a prison of negative memories. In many cases, the pain we hold on to affects us more deeply than it does the person we're angry at. By choosing to forgive, you essentially choose to free yourself from this cycle of pain, allowing healing and personal growth to take place. 5. Stop sabotaging yourself with negative fuel. Years ago, I made a conscious decision to step back from regularly consuming the daily news. Unless there's a significant event happening, I generally keep my distance. The same principle applies to the movies I watch. If I start a film and quickly realize it's neither inspiring, uplifting nor intellectually stimulating, I don't hesitate to switch it off in favor of a good book. In today's world, we're constantly bombarded with media. However, we have the power to choose what we consume opting for content that nourishes our minds. This doesn't mean we should only expose ourselves to overly positive or cheerful information. I'm aware that some movies, despite their challenging themes, can offer profound lessons, and I don't stay away completely from them. There's also value in staying informed about global events, which is why I'll tune into the news for essential updates. But there's a fine line between being informed and drowning in negativity. Being mindful about the information we feed our minds is crucial. Instead of absorbing content passively, I believe in selecting it deliberately, aiming to enrich my understanding and well-being rather than depleting it. 6. Stop allowing yourself to endure a disharmonious environment. Living in an environment that doesn't align with your need for tranquility, comfort and calm can be challenging. Whether at home or to a certain degree in the workplace, the spaces around us significantly influence our mood and overall well-being. When we find ourselves in settings that feel chaotic or just not right, it's essential to remember that we have the power to transform them into places where we feel content and at peace. Creating a harmonious environment may require a bit of creativity, especially when dealing with limitations such as space or budget. Your home should be a sanctuary, a place where you can recharge and feel at peace. Consider incorporating elements that promote tranquility, such as plants, soothing colors, and comfortable furnishings. Pay attention to lighting and airflow, as these can significantly affect the energy of a space. By addressing the aspects of your environment that don't serve your needs for peace and comfort, you can create spaces that not only meet your basic requirements, but also uplift your spirits. Whether it's through small adjustments or more significant changes, the goal is to fill your surroundings with light, warmth, and elements that make you feel good, thereby improving your quality of life. 7. Stop spending time with negative people. At times, we find ourselves in situations where we're surrounded by individuals who seem to have a cloud of negativity hanging over them. Be it constant complaining, a pessimistic outlook, or just a general vibe of discontent. While we might think we're immune to the influence of such negativity, it's surprising how much it can impact us, even if we believe we're shielded against it. Being in the company of people who are often unhappy, angry or fearful can affect us more than we realize. Everyone goes through rough patches and needs a listening ear or some support to get through those times. Usually we work through these negative emotions and find our way back to a more positive state of mind. However, 
there are those who seem to dwell permanently in a state of negativity. And it's this consistent undercurrent of gloom that can feel contagious, dragging down our own spirits and increasing our stress levels, even if it doesn't turn us into pessimists ourselves. When I find myself unable to avoid pessimistic individuals, I try to detach myself from the negativity. This doesn't apply to friends who are genuinely struggling and need support. It's a different scenario altogether. But for those whose negativity has become a default mode of communication, I either mentally distance myself, attempt to steer the conversation in a more positive direction, or find an excuse to exit the situation. This approach helps protect my own well-being, ensuring that I maintain my positivity and peace of mind. So, my friend, embracing positivity doesn't mean expecting life to be an endless parade of happiness and ease. True growth and learning come from navigating the challenges life throws our way. However, fostering qualities like compassion, understanding and joy not only enriches our own lives, but also makes the world around us a bit brighter. By being mindful of our tendencies to blame and holding on to resentment, and choosing forgiveness instead, we invite a more positive and compassionate flow into our lives. I hope you learned something today. If you loved this video, please share, like, and comment. I appreciate your doing so. As always, wishing you a beautiful day.